Hey, a few weeks ago I had my birthday. I turned 39. When this whole pandemic began, I couldn't have imagined that would still be in a pandemic by the time it would be my birthday, but it's a few weeks later now and here we still are. Like many of you, I've had a lot of time to reflect on everything. And I realize now that as I approach 40, I've learned a few important lessons about photography, travel, and just life in general. I do wish that I knew some of them before. So I decided to make this video. It's the sort of stuff that I'd share with the younger version of me. Or if you want to do something similar to what I've been doing to what I do, well, when this craziness is finished, then this video could be very useful for you. Hey, I'm Mitchell. For the past decade, I've been living my dream, journeying around the world as a professional travel photographer. During this time, I've seen and I've learned a lot. And now I want to share the knowledge with you. Come along on the journey. So, because of the lockdown, I spent more time here uh, in Urubamba, Peru, than I have in my home city of Sydney over the past decade, I think. Thankfully, I'm with my family. And this area that we've been stuck in is actually stunning. Because of the lockdown, we've only done a tiny bit of exploring, only in the nearby places of nature. All the while I was looking at Google Maps and satellite imagery and dreaming of exploring further. Now that we can actually move around the region, more exploration is in order, little by little, every other day, sometimes with the family, other times on my own. Today, since I'm making this video and I'm alone, I want to take you with me and share some of these lessons that I've learned with you. Anyway, the first important lesson that I learned since I said, hey, I want to be a travel photographer. You got to do the shit that you got to do to do the shit that you want to do. I actually heard this line in an interview with Denzel Washington somewhere. And I really love this line because I think it uh, speaks a lot about what uh, people in the creative industries have to do, at least early on in their career. I worked all sorts of jobs. Warehouses, Burger King, door-to-door -door sales, hardware store. I was even a Santa Claus photographer in a shopping center once. Later, I shot wedding videos, christening photos, and corporate videos. And all of these jobs I either disliked or hated. And uh, I really struggled with this idea of spending my life doing something that I didn't like. Sometimes in a pretty bad environment too, with other people who hated their job just as much as me or maybe even more. <laughs> if you've been in that situation, if you are in that situation, you know just how soul crushing it can be. I'm uh, just arriving at the place that I wanted to check out today. I've actually been here before, but I want to explore it a little bit more to see if it's worth coming back with the girls on another day. So now that I can look back on it, I would say to my younger self or to any of you who are in that kind of situation now that those jobs they don't have to be you, you know. Uh, they don't have to be your path. They're simply a means to an end. Knowing that a job which you don't like isn't it for you really helps you see the light at the end of the tunnel. It was very difficult to grasp that while I was in those jobs, especially the early ones which I really hated. But looking back at everything now, it does make sense. Once my photography picked up, it became more and more clear that I probably wouldn't be stuck doing these jobs that I don't like. And so I started to feel less threatened by this idea of, you know, doing something that I hate uh, for the rest of my life. Uh, coincidentally, the jobs that I started to get got better too. They still weren't what I loved, but it was definitely better shooting a wedding 
and better paid than working in a hardware store. And with those jobs that I didn't enjoy, I started to understand that I'm doing the shit that I gotta do to do the shit that I wanna do. That I was saving up for a project, for uh, some piece of gear, for a trip, stuff like that. I wanted to see if there's a nice beach to come back to with the girls and uh, this area is pretty stunning but uh, there was construction here before and I did see some trucks uh, just leaving so I don't know uh, I'm gonna look around a little bit more but it is pretty stunning here and uh, there's something that I want to say or announce this week is a very special one you may already know about the huge discount that's currently on for my travel photography course due to the whole COVID thing. I never planned to drop the price so much, but I wanted to make it as affordable as possible during these hard times. Now that the situation is improving in many places, this is gonna be the final week. So Sunday, August 2nd, it's over. This was an unexpected one-off kind of case, so the price will never be this low again. I'm actually releasing something new that many of you have been asking for, so yeah, just letting you know. And of course, final week of the special also means a week of videos. This is only the first of the three videos that you will be seeing in the coming days. Now, the next lesson, which for me, when I look back on it now, seems like a no-brainer. You don't need someone to send you on an assignment. I actually understood this quite early on, but over the years people have asked me how do you get your projects funded how do you who sends you to these amazing places <laughs> or how do i get an assignment like that oh, this is kind of nice i want to see if i can get closer to the river here The thing is, I don't get these assignments. And I never spent my time and energy uh, searching for assignments, especially in the beginning. Instead, I just went out there and focused on photographing what interests me to build my body of work. Because honestly, why would somebody pay me or you if they don't even see any body of work from you? By building my body of work, I had photos to sell to magazines, I could generate an income in various ways. And later on, this body of work helped me land some well-paying projects. Though out of all the paid projects, only one of them was really like me that had the travel documentary flavor that was mine. It was a campaign that I shot in Romania for Panasonic. And I'm not saying that there aren't great paid projects and assignments out there, but I've found that you don't need to wait for them. In fact, I think that you shouldn't wait for them or search for them uh, to do something exciting. The Panasonic campaign was the byproduct of me having built a certain body of work and they offered the project to me because they wanted images like that. Now, my case is pretty extreme in that I never really pursued assignments at all. Maybe that's exactly what you want to do. In any case, if I were to give advice, I would say that the younger version of myself got this one pretty right. It is very nice in this spot, but it's just too tight here to hang out with a family for more than 10 minutes. I'm gonna check out another place which I saw the last time that I drove through here. So, if you ask me, in the beginning, uh, go do your own thing. Uh, don't focus on assignments, build your body of work, which you can then show to people who could pay you to shoot something similar. And if they don't, well, you already have something that could help you generate an income. Another important lesson, something that I look back on now and realize that I kind of accidentally did it right. Use your window of opportunity. Let me explain to you what I mean by using your window of opportunity. After finishing uni, 
I went to Thailand to do a little doco project on child boxes, Muay Thai fighters. And uh, I stayed with them uh, in the boxing camp, slept in the room next door on a mattress on the floor. I did everything with them, ate with them, um, you know, whatever, whatever they did, I did. And I didn't have a single worry in the world. I had a local girlfriend and I really immersed myself in the country and the culture. I could not do the same thing today. Obviously I'm married, I have a family, but also it's one thing to stay with a bunch of 12 to 19 year old kids when you're 21 years old yourself and a totally different thing to do it when you're 39. I would find it very hard to connect with the boxes at 39 and uh, from a societal standpoint it would also be seen as very weird and I'd get a lot of unnecessary questions. Now by no means would it be completely impossible, it would be possible but it would not be ideal or even a very good situation to be in. Whether we like it or not, there is a window of opportunity to do certain things at certain stages of life. All sorts of factors play a role in how wide that window of opportunity will be, besides age. It's uh, how healthy you are, how many responsibilities you have or don't have. Uh, it varies from person to person, but one thing for sure, it doesn't stay the same from ages of 20 to 50. Look, this is the railway to Machu Picchu, I think. Yeah, I think this is where the train passes and there haven't been any trains due to the lockdown. They even blocked the entire way up in that direction. Now, when I was in my 20s, I could put up with much more crap. Uh, I had very low expectations and even when I was traveling, together with my wife, the two of us, we needed virtually no comfort and no money. These days, I prefer at least some comfort. My tolerance for crap is much lower and I am responsible for my six-year-old daughter. Oh, look there, there used to be more trees there before. Not sure if it's legal logging, but uh, a few trees are missing. Anyway, I, I wanna be with my daughter as much as I can but uh, I wouldn't necessarily take her with me to the same sorts of places where me and my wife used to go to when uh, she used to help me out on projects. A trip to a volcanic crater at 4 a.m. where the sulfur clouds made us feel like coughing, crying and vomiting all at the same time? Nope, not taking her somewhere like that. I wouldn't ride like mad in a rush to find different stories and projects as I did with my wife in India and I wouldn't take her to really crowded festivals or celebrations. And it's not that these things are like really risky. It's just that now I wouldn't want to take any risk. There's too much at stake. Obviously my daughter is too important to me. So the window of opportunity for that sort of stuff has become a lot more narrow and I recognize that. I still could do that sort of stuff without my daughter, but to me kind of the whole point of having a child is so that you can spend more time with them when they're little. So this is something to keep in mind, especially those of you who like to put things off and to keep saying next year, next year, I'll do it next year. And then circumstances change and your window of opportunity closes completely. Okay, that's the place that I wanna to get to. There's some construction machinery there too, but the area seems like uh, it could be a nice one to hang out. The last lesson that I want to share for today. This one applies mostly to the men, since I can't really speak <laughs> about anything else but being a man. But the lesson is, you don't have to fear having a child. Now, I was totally freaked out about having a child and if I had planned things, um, we'd maybe be having our daughter now and we didn't really plan, but we were very open and uh, call it nature, God, you know, whatever you want to call it, but we had our daughter and uh, as cliched as it might sound, this is very honest, she is the best thing that has happened uh, in my life. She's the big reason why I've kept relatively sane during these crazy times and I didn't think this before, but for me, 
being a father, having my daughter, has been a huge part of just the human experience. It's certainly changed the way I see the world and even the way that I photograph. Seems like it's way too windy to continue this video from outside. Just you wouldn't hear anything, but I'll show you this spot. You can see it is crazy windy here, but it is a nice spot. It's uh, probably better to come back here uh, when it's a little earlier. I just saw these guys out of nowhere appear with some dogs. And I definitely have to leave from here and shoot this and side the car somewhere uh, along the way back. So, I did say that my window of opportunity has closed on certain things since having my daughter. And that is true, but would I still want to be doing those things? at this age i think with most of them no and uh, we still do a lot of things so i think that in that larger scheme of things i'm really not missing out on much i'm actually just coming back towards the first place by the river so when it comes to travel having a child is definitely what you make of it that's kind of been the main takeaway for me. Uh, as long as you have a partner who's on the same page as you, who's into the same lifestyle as you, you can definitely make it happen. I mean, we've been traveling with my daughter since she was three months old. So yeah, no need to freak out if you are in the same situation that I was in, uh, but make sure that you are with the right person who's supportive and uh, is into the same lifestyle as you are. Remember, this is the final week on the biggest discount ever on my travel photography course. So now there's already less than six days left. Just letting you know one last time. Anyway, that is it for today. I'm gonna explore a little more tomorrow and you'll see that video on Wednesday. Uh, I'll also share a lesson that I learned that helped me uh, avoid being a starving artist all my life. And I'll also tell you what lesson led to me traveling the way that I do now as well as a very important general life lesson, which I think is particularly relevant with the whole COVID thing. So again, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.